Ferns are among the oldest living plants on the planet, and many play important roles in their ecosystems. Ferns are a place of rest for our native birds, moths, and other insects. Ferns can grow in nearly everywhere on our islands, from deep in the forest to the sides of steep cliffs. Ferns filter out water and are used by many animals as nesting material. Humans have found many uses for ferns too. The ancient Hawaiians used the Ekaha fern to make medicines to treat fever. These ferns can grow in deep forest environments in both wet and somewhat dry conditions. The ancient Hawaiians cared for the forest and only gathered what they needed to ensure that there would be enough for future generations. Roots, rhizome, stipe, leaf blade, sori, spores. Let's take a closer look at this ekaha. Down here is the root zone, which goes into the soil and is also holding the fern to the rock. Coming out of the root zone is the rhizome. Coming out of the rhizome is the leaf blade, which has two parts, the stipe, which is the center part that is black, and the leaf blade itself are the green leaves coming out of it. The sori are these brown things underneath the leaf, and the spores are inside the sori. So now let's go to the fern lab and take a closer look at this. Welcome to our fern lab. This is where we turn spores into sporophytes. You may be wondering why we need a lab to grow ferns. During cultivation, ferns have very specific requirements like light, temperature, and moisture in order to grow them successfully. Let's check out how our scientists here in the lab help ferns through their life cycle. First, we carefully remove spores from the frond. Fronds can have tens of thousands of spores that spread in the wind or simply fall to the forest floor. After the spores are collected, we scatter them on a soil-like substrate and place them under light and wait for them to grow. We call these little ones sporophytes. Once they are big enough, we transplant the sporophytes to a pot and continue to keep them in the fern lab until they are strong enough to join our other ferns outdoors. Now it's your turn to grow a fern. First, let's gather all the materials needed for the experiment. We will be using peat pellets as our substrate for this experiment. Place your pellets in a shallow tray and carefully add warm distilled water. Wait for the pellets to absorb the water. You'll know they're ready when they've expanded to about one to one and a half inches tall. Place the expanded pellets in foil cupcake liners or petri dishes and set on a tray. Gently tap some of the spores onto each peat pellet. A cotton swab is a useful tool for this. It's important to keep all our tools and substrate clean to avoid contamination from fungi and other life forms that also thrive in these conditions. Cover each peat pellet with an 8 ounce clear plastic cup to create a humid environment. Keep the tray in a warm spot with indirect light. Moisten the pellet if necessary by adding water to the dish or liner at the base of the pellet. 
Avoid watering from the top to prevent disruption or movement of the spores. Use your observation sheet to record your fern's progress from spores to sporophytes.